News of Tyrion's appointment as hand to Daenerys has also reached King's Landing, news which Cersei breaks to Jaime when they make a list of their enemies. Tyrion arrives on Dragonstone, accompanied by Daenerys, Missandei, Varys, and Grey Worm. He follows Daenerys from the shore of the island to the painted table of Westeros, pulling down the standard of Stannis Baratheon and running her hands along the simplistically ornate throne before asking if they can begin planning her conquest. As they begin planning for the conquest of Westeros, Tyrion cautions Daenerys not to launch a direct assault on the city with her dragons or she will merely become Queen of the Ashes, to which Daenerys concurs. Tyrion witnesses as Daenerys calls into question Varys's allegiance, as his loyalty has shifted from king to king since the days when he served her father. The Hand tries to defend his friend, insisting that Varys had been the one to convince him over to their cause and that he had served her well since then, assisting his rule of Marine and securing the alliance of Dawn and House Tyrell. However, Daenerys demands that Varys explain himself without support from Tyrion who watches as the spider swears that he will be loyal to her as long as she keeps the people's best interests at heart. Daenerys requests that Varys not conspire against her if she should fail and that he try his hardest to dissuade her. Grey Worm announces the arrival of Melisandre, who brings them news of events in the north and Jon Snow's coronation as king, to Tyrion's surprise. Although somewhat skeptical of Melisandre's prophecies, Tyrion admits that he liked and trusted Jon's character when they travel to the Wall together and encourages Daenerys to make an alliance with him. Tyrion later joins Daenerys for a council of war with Missandei, Varys, Grey Worm, Olena Tyrell, the Greyjoy siblings and Ilaria Sand. Tyrion initially clashes with Ilaria, as he knows she poisoned his niece Marcella and she blames him indirectly for Oberon's death. After Daenerys stops their argument, Tyrion helps her explain their plan to invade Westeros, as Cersei is trying to rally the lords to defend King's Landing against a foreign army. Daenerys unsullied and Dothraki will not attack the city or they will, prove her point. Instead, the Greyjoy fleet will ferry the Dornish army north to lay siege to King's Landing alongside the Tyrell forces, trapping Cersei and most of her army in the capital and starving them out. Meanwhile, in response to Olena's question of the use of Daenerys's foreign soldiers, Tyrion plans to have the unsullied sail around Westeros and capture Casterly Rock, the true seat of House Lannister's power. Ilaria, Yara Greyjoy and Olena agree to follow this plan. All does not go as planned, however. On their way to dawn, Yara's fleet is decimated by her uncle Euron's Iron Fleet, and both she and Ilaria are captured. Tyrion is later seen meeting with Jon Snow, Davos Seaworth, and their men, as they arrive in a small boat onto the shores of Dragonstone. Tyrion teases Jon, calling him, the Bastard of Winterfell, to which Jon retorts, calling Tyrion, the Dwarf of Casterly Rock. They greet each other warmly and seem to be happy to see each other again, exchanging friendly barbs back and forth. John and his party are then forced to surrender their weapons, and they reluctantly do so. Then, as the party is escorted towards the castle, a group of Daenerys soldiers whisk away the boat. John and Davos exchange looks of concern at this. As they make their way up the castle steps, John and Tyrion have a conversation about how they got to their respective positions and how Jon's followers must think he's crazy for going to Dragonstone. Tyrion concurs, stating that if he were Jon's advisor, he would have advised against it, and cites that going south doesn't usually work out well for the Starks, to which Jon swiftly replies that he is not a Stark. They are then suddenly interrupted when Drogon swoops down towards them, and everyone is forced to duck for cover. Jon takes a moment to recover from the sudden shock, as the party continues on their journey towards the castle. As they reach the throne room, Jon and Davos begin to speak with Daenerys as Tyrion watches by her side. The meeting is very tense as both sides refuse to submit to the other's demands. Tyrion plays an important moderating role by vouching for Jon's integrity and character, helping to soften Daenerys' attitude towards the insistent and unbowing king in the north. As the meeting is about to end on an unfavorable note, Tyrion urges Jon to simply bend the knee reasoning that if Westeros is doomed by the threat of White Walkers, it makes no difference who he supports for the Iron Throne, especially if it will help him further his goals. The meeting is interrupted by Varys who delivers news about the decimated Greyjoy fleet. Danny allows Jon and Davos to stay as guests, until they can reach a proper agreement. Later, Tyrion meets with Jon on the grounds of Dragonstone. Jon is unhappy that he is a prisoner while the Night King and White Walkers still pose a threat. Tyrion encourages a despondent Jon not to give up and confides that he trusts the word of Jon and Jor Mormont. 
Tyrion also vouches for his queen and reassures Jon that she is not like her father. Tyrion also asks Jon if there is something he can do to help. Jon tells Tyrion about the vein of dragonglass beneath Dragonstone. Tyrion manages to convince a skeptical Danny to allow Jon to mine the dragonglass on the pretext that it will win her an ally. Danny grants Jon permission to mine the dragonglass and outfits him with the manpower and equipment to do so. At the chamber of the painted table, Tyrion along with Varys and Missande discuss Euron Greyjoy's destruction of Yara's fleet. Tyrion and Missande argue against Daenerys' plan to lead her dragons on a mission to hunt and destroy Euron's fleet, opining that she faces the prospect of death. Tyrion then elaborates his plan to seize Casterly Rock using an underground tunnel. Grey Worm uses this tunnel to capture Casterly Rock, only to discover that the Lannisters have withdrawn the bulk of their forces. Euron's Iron Fleet attacks the Targaryen ships, trapping the Unsullied at Casterly Rock. Varys and Tyrion inform Daenerys that the Unsullied succeeded in capturing Casterly Rock, only to then reveal the disaster which just occurred at Highgarden as Tyrion's military strategy fell apart. Daenerys is furious and struggles to keep her temper, as now all three of her major allies in Westeros are gone and all she has gained is a castle with no supplies. She snaps at Tyrion, blaming his cautious strategy for losing them Dawn, the Iron Islands, Yara's forces, and now the Reach. She then accuses Tyrion of wanting to use a light hand against the Lannisters because they're his own people. Tyrion insists that they still have just enough ships left to at least shuttle the Dothraki from Dragonstone to the nearby mainland coast. Even with the loss of all her other allies, her combined unsullied, Dothraki forces are still the largest single army in Westeros. Daenerys fumes that her vast numbers are useless if she can't feed them all, as that was the Reach's true strategic value. Daenerys decides she has had enough of clever plans, declaring she will use the Dothraki and her dragons in a direct assault on the Red Keep to destroy her enemies. Tyrion urges her against this and when Daenerys asks Jon Snow for his input, he agrees with Tyrion to not attack King's Landing. Daenerys decides to attack the Lannister army en route to King's Landing following their victory at the sack of Highgarden, which would destroy expenses retrieved in the process, atop Drogon. Tyrion is present when she attacks the Lannister forces outside King's Landing during the Battle of the Goldroad, watching miserable as the Dothraki massacre his kinsmen. When Drogon is injured and is forced to land, Tyrion watches in horror as Jaime foolishly charges at Daenerys on the battlefield and nearly incinerated by Drogon, before being saved by Bronn. In the aftermath of the battle, Tyrion examines the damage on the battlefield and is present when Daenerys offers the surviving Lannister and Tarly men a choice, kneel or die. When Randall Tarly refuses, Tyrion is quick to point out Randall's newfound loyalty to Cersei, despite her role in annihilating House Tyrell. Randall, in turn, denounces Tyrion and his loyalty to Daenerys, viewing her as a foreign invader. Despite Tyrion's insistence that Randall and Dickon Tarly be imprisoned or sent to the wall, Daenerys ignores his advice, explaining that they already made their choice, and orders Drogon to burn them alive. Back at Dragonstone, Tyrion discusses the aftermath of the battle with Varys. Though confident that Daenerys is not her father, Varys suggests that Tyrion find a way to make her listen to his advice. When Tyrion notices a message in his hand, Varys says that it is for Jon. At Daenerys' subsequent council meeting, Tyrion suggests capturing a white north of the wall and bringing it back to Cersei as proof of the true common enemy. To convince Cersei to stand down, however, he must first appeal to Jaime. Davos agrees to smuggle Tyrion into King's Landing, but warns him of the consequences should the Gold Cloaks recognize him. Arriving at a secluded beach close to the Red Keep, Tyrion remarks that he murdered his own father the last time he was in King's Landing, with Davos remarking that Tyrion murdered his son the last time he visited the city. With time short, Tyrion makes his way inside. In the cellar beneath the Red Keep, Bronn arranges the meeting in the guise of a secret sparring session. Tyrion commends Jaime for outsmarting him at the siege of Casterly Rock, then does his best to explain his true motivations for murdering their father. When Jaime demands to know the real reason for the meeting, Tyrion explains that though Daenerys' victory is inevitable, she is genuinely nothing like her father, and has a more important request for Cersei. Upon returning to the beach, Tyrion spots two gold cloaks near Davos's boat, and is spotted in return. Before the guards can arrest him, however, Davos's companion quickly dispatches them. After Tyrion is introduced to Gendry, the three make their escape. 
Tyrion later reunites with Jorah Mormont, his former traveling companion, and reminisces over their journey to Meereen, after which Tyrion gives Jorah the coin used to pay for him by Yezan, hoping it will bring him luck for the White Hunt. Later, he and Daenerys discuss heroism, Daenerys telling him he is no hero. Tyrion disagrees, and tries to explain how he received his scar by charging through the mud gate. Daenerys interrupts him, stating she doesn't want him to be a hero, as they do stupid things and end up dead. She names Drogo, Dario Naharis, Jorah Mormont and Jon Snow as examples, which Tyrion notes, stating all four of these men fell in love with her. Daenerys says Jon Snow doesn't love her, to which Tyrion responds sarcastically he only stares at her longingly because he is hopeful for a successful military alliance. When Daenerys calls Jon too little for her, Tyrion says that as far as heroes go, he is quite little. Daenerys then says she knows Tyrion is brave, as she wouldn't have chosen a coward as her hand. Daenerys changes the subject, by saying if the White Hunt goes well, she'll finally get to meet Cersei, who wants to kill her. Tyrion notes that she would probably torture her first. He vows that if they go to the capital, they will go with the full capacity of their forces, and if someone even touches her, they'll burn the city to the ground. Daenerys says she's probably planning a trap, but Tyrion notes that Cersei is probably thinking the very same thing about Daenerys. When Daenerys asks him if they should lay a trap, Tyrion says it would be better to build a new world without mass murder. Daenerys remarks that no war was won without it, which Tyrion agrees but states that fear alone isn't the right way of ruling. When Danny says Aegon Targaryen got quite a long way with fear, Tyrion reminds her of her promise of breaking the wheel, which Aegon built. Tyrion then speaks about his meeting with Jaime, where he promised to keep the Lannisters' forces in check if Tyrion makes sure Daenerys doesn't lose her temper. Daenerys responds she does not lose her temper, to which Tyrion replies she lost it when she killed the Tarlys. She notes that Tyrion takes his family's side once again. Tyrion says he has to as the only way to beat them is to think like them. He states that he wants to serve Daenerys for the long term, and wants to make sure that, after she is queen and broken the wheel, it stays broken after her death. He states that Daenerys once said she believes she can't have children, but that there are other ways to name an heir. Daenerys says he's been thinking of her death for quite a while, and angrily reminds him they lost Dawn and Highgarden because of his lack of planning for the short term. Tyrion remains silent as Daenerys says they will discuss this further after she is queen. When Daenerys receives a letter from Gendry, asking for help with the White Hunt gone wrong, Tyrion tries to stop her from going to the war with her dragons, saying she is the most important person in the world, and she can't go to the most dangerous place in the world. He claims the group knew the risk when they left, and Daenerys shouldn't try to save them. When she steps on Drogon, she asks him what he would have her do. Tyrion says that doing nothing is the hardest thing to do, but if she dies, everything and everyone would be lost. Daenerys reminds him he told her to do nothing once, and having learned the hard way, she won't do this again. Tyrion looks at her as she and her dragons dive off the cliff, heading for the wall. After Cersei agrees to a summit in the dragon pit at King's Landing, Tyrion and Jon arrive in the capital with their various allies, while the Unsullied and the Dothraki amass outside the city walls to attack in case the truce gets broken. At the harbour, Tyrion, Varys, Masande, Jon and Davos nervously sail past Euron Greyjoy's fleet. The group arrives and are escorted to the Dragon Pit, the location of the summit. Tyrion reconnects with Bronn, who concedes it is good to see him again. The pair greet Podrick Payne, who had arrived earlier with Brienne of Tarth. Tyrion reminds Podrick that he is no longer a Westerosi noble after killing Tywin and Bronn that he will always pay more than what Cersei will in return for his service. Bronn rebuffs this, stating that if anything goes wrong during the parley, Cersei will have Bronn to thank for delivering her enemies to King's Landing. When Cersei arrives, she glares hatefully at Tyrion and quickly grows impatient that Daenerys has not come with him, only for Daenerys herself to make a dramatic arrival on Dragonback moments later. Tyrion opens the negotiations, but is quickly interrupted by Euron Greyjoy, who mocks him and threatens Theon until Jaime and Cersei shut him down. Tyrion points out that if all they wanted to do was fight each other to the death, they would never have agreed to this meeting. Jon Snow then reveals the threat posed by the Night King and the Army of the Dead. Although Daenerys promises to uphold a truce with the Lannisters until the Night King has been dealt with, Cersei dismisses their claim concerning the Army of the Dead 
saying they are simply attempting to strengthen their position while she is standing down. Tyrion replies that they have something to show her, and Sandor Clegane brings out the white that was captured north of the wall. Shaken by what she sees, Cersei at first seems willing to accept a truce, but only if Jon Snow agrees to have the North remain neutral and support near the Queen. To Tyrion's dismay, Jon replies that he cannot do so, as he has already declared for Daenerys. In response, Cersei leaves the summit. Furious, Tyrion rebukes Jon for not being able to make a small lie in order to secure them a political and military advantage. He declares that he will go and speak with Cersei alone, despite Daenerys's protests that she will have him murdered, or else they will be right back where they started. Tyrion is escorted into the Tower of the Hand by Gregor Clegane. He meets Jaime outside, who claims he tried to reason with Cersei until she threw him out. Tyrion then meets Cersei inside the same office both he and their father once occupied, as Hand of the King. Cersei accuses him of having tried to bring down House Lannister from the very beginning. Although she finally acknowledges that Tyrion did not kill Joffrey, she reminds him that he did kill their father, and holds him responsible for the deaths of her other children, as she believed no one would have touched Tommen or Marcella while Tywin was alive. Tyrion truthfully claims he was unaware of Jon's bending the knee to Daenerys and expresses sincere regret for the deaths of his nephew and niece, but Cersei does not care, claiming he destroyed their house's future regardless of his intentions. Angered, Tyrion tries to goad her into having him killed, if she blames him for everything that has befallen her. Cersei looks ready to give the order to Sir Gregor, but reluctantly relents. Tyrion wonders why she allowed him to arrange the peace negotiations in the first place if she didn't expect anything to happen. Cersei turns the question back at him, wondering why he supports Daenerys as loyally as he does. Cersei dismisses Tyrion's assertions that Daenerys is better at controlling her violent impulses than she is. She expresses the horror she felt when she saw the White, and her desire to keep her loved ones safe from them at any cost. From this and her gestures, Tyrion correctly deduces that she is pregnant with another incestuous child by Jaime. Tyrion then returns to his allies at the Dragon Pit, where they are joined shortly after by his brother and sister. Cersei claims she will agree to the truce and send the Lannister forces north to fight alongside the Starks and the Targaryens. After a discussion at Dragonstone over their journey to the north, Tyrion accompanies his queen and Jon Snow aboard a ship that will take them to White Harbor. On the voyage, Tyrion witnesses Daenerys allowing Jon into her cabin, where the two of them give in to their mutual attraction and engage in a sexual encounter. Concerned with the possible political consequences for his queen, Tyrion walks away.